Hello everyone, I'm Camden Runyon. And I'm Maddie Donabauer. Welcome back to the fourth edition of Prior Crier for the 2023 through 2024 school year. Let's take a look at what's to come in this second edition. The varsity girls basketball team won against Northmore. Prior Crier prepared a short documentary about the small businesses of Main Street Centerburg. We asked students and staff, what's your favorite Christmas movie? The Parley Pro team goes to state. Seniors signed for college. The varsity girls basketball team defeated Northmore in a recent match. That puts them at two wins for their season so far at the time of filming. Vipasa Sutar has the story. The varsity girls basketball team won a recent game against Northmore with a score of 46 to 25 on December the 6th. Junior forward Kayla Laramore says that she thinks the team played well overall during the match and so far in the season. I think we did really well. There is always stuff to get better at and stuff like that, but I think we did well. We, our hustle was there, attitude and effort was there. I think we've been doing pretty good. Um, it's obviously hard to get used to a new coach and stuff like that, the bond. Senior forward Kennedy Glenn says that despite the change in coaching staff, the team is still experiencing a sense of camaraderie and is working to face new obstacles. It's been different, but um, so far we're having a lot of fun and we're growing together as a team. Well, we've learned a lot this year. Um, it's all new this year because we have all new coaches, but I think we've worked really well as a team recently. We've been great teammates. We've been having fun and learning a lot. Head coach Bill Abner says that he has been pleased with the team's performance, but plans to keep helping the team improve. Up and down, you know, and that's sort of been the story of us. When we are solid in our fundamentals, we're tough to deal with, you know, but then we throw bad passes and drop passes and things like that. So there's, there's still things to clean up. I'm, I'm really happy with the win, but we have to get better. You know, it's, it's all a process, you know, and we, we always talk about every practice getting a little bit better, every game getting a little bit better. Coach Abner also says that a season is like a staircase and he hopes to keep taking steps as the season progresses so by the end of it, the team will be able to play their best basketball. Good luck to the team in the rest of their season. I'm Bipasa Sutar for Prior Crier. Thank you, Bipasa. And good luck to the team in their next game at home against East Knox this Saturday the 16th. Have you ever wondered what it takes to run a small business, especially in a small town? Well. The team here at Prior Crier has prepared a short documentary looking at some of the businesses at Main Street Cineburg. Please enjoy. Owning a business is part of the mythos of the American dream. In fact, small businesses make up 99.9% .9 of all business in the United States according to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. However, this may be more challenging than many realize and with the holiday season approaching, nowhere is this idea more prevalent than the main street of the small Midwestern town like Centerburg, Ohio. As reported by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, 18% of small businesses fail within the first year and jumps to 50% within the first five years. Miracles on Main is a specialty lifestyle boutique that sources decor and apparel from other small businesses. The store recently celebrated its one year anniversary. Shannon Weisbrod is the owner and says she knew the risks going in, but her drive and passion keep her going. Moving into the future, she says that community involvement is going to be the key to her success. That was one of my biggest fears because I'm not originally from here. Um, and so I thought, oh, I'm not really from here, and I'm from, but I'm from a small town, so I know that sometimes that can be challenging. Um, and so, you know, are people going to be supportive? Are they, are they going to want me here? Are they going to want me to stay? And how are we going to make that happen collectively as a whole? And I certainly can't do it on my own. So that's where, you know, the people come into play and the choices that they make whenever they do their shopping. Make sure all my price tags are facing out. Mm -hmm. Little Oasis LLC is a business that opened in Centerburg around seven months ago by Charmin Mickety, meant to be half play place with equipment for children and one half resale shop. Brandy Hartley is one of the vendors in the store and is friends with Mickety. On November 28th, the play place closed and Hartley says they are going to turn that half of the storefront into a space for more vendors. Uh, again, the play place, it's had, it had a few a few kids come in, a few parents, but I, it wasn't it wasn't the numbers I think we were hoping for. 
Hartley says that the struggles Lil Oasis is facing seem to be more common in Centerburg. I'd say for the past 20 years, it's, I think it's a struggle for a lot of businesses. There was a business that closed while we were opening here. So, um, again, I just don't, we haven't been here long enough to really gauge. And I don't just think it's one thing. It's not that black and white. I think it's several things. But I don't think we've personally been here long enough to determine what the bigger issues are. We're still hanging in there, we hope, because Intel is coming and it just is going to bring traffic and extra people, homes. Uh, hopefully we can hold out for that. Brad Butcher and his wife Lacey own the Bird Cafe. The establishment specializes in baked goods along with sandwiches and coffee. Butcher says he has experienced many successes throughout his five years running the business. Uh, we've grown quite a bit. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with our growth. Uh, when we first, um, me, my, I established our first goal was to for the business to be able to pay for itself, and then the next goal was for the business to be able to uh, start paying us and stuff. And, it's, it's made those goals and um, it's grown enough where we can actually have help, um, which when we first started it was just my wife and I and we did everything. One of those people is freshman Alex Butcher, the son of Brad who has been working in the cafe since the age of eight. He says he has seen great personal benefits such as learning lessons on saving from a young age while also being able to help his family while working at the cafe. Uh, it's definitely different from anywhere you can normally work because when you work for your own family, it helps you succeed in what you're trying to do. It helps you pay for the vehicles you own, the, the house you live in, you know, having electricity. It helps your family and I think it is very important that me personally, I enjoy working here because I see so many different people come in and enjoy enjoy eating here because of different options. Because normally most places around here are um, either you know late at night diners like in 1834 and Pizza and Long Branch, such as that. Whereas breakfast type places you don't normally come across as much in Centerburg because people are on their way to work and when they come back it's usually late at night. So. While owning a small business comes with struggles and obstacles, with the support of the consumer, it is still an achievable aspiration. For Prior Cryer, I'm Maddie Donabauer. Thank you, Maddie. We are currently in the midst of the holiday season, and to get even more of the spirit, we talked to some students and staff about their favorite part of the holidays. Lily Donabauer has the story. There's a chill in the air as the Christmas season approaches. What better way to spend the Christmas season than watching Christmas movies? Today we asked students and staff, what's your favorite Christmas movie? Excuse me, what is your favorite Christmas movie? Uh, probably The Muppets Christmas Carol. It's so easy. It's Elf. Why? Dude, because it's Elf, man. Home Alone. It was scary as a child for me to watch that, so I loved watching it. The Family Stone. Why? Um, it's very heartfelt. Um, it's about a family who is losing their mother to cancer, and so it's kind of their last Christmas that they spend together, and they just make a lot of, like, realizations and reflect a lot on themselves as individuals and kind of come out better in the end. What's your favorite Christmas movie? Uh, Christmas Vacation. Favorite Christmas movie? I would have to say Home Alone. <laughs> what is your favorite holiday Christmas movie? Uh, Polar Express. What's your favorite Christmas movie? Muppet Christmas Carol. What's your favorite Christmas movie, Mr. Marhavka? From the classics to the new, it seems that everyone has something that gets them in the holiday spirit. For Prior Crier, I'm Lily Donabauer. Thank you, Lily. You know, the Charlie Brown Christmas specials really hold a special place in my heart. I've watched them my whole life. Um, but I do also love It's a Wonderful Life and White Christmas. Yeah, those are all classics, but I would have to say Elf is definitely my favorite Christmas movie. Elf is a really good one. You know, I like watching any kind of Christmas movie this time of year, except maybe Hallmark movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. They can be pretty corny, but they're also entertaining sometimes. I don't know. I just find all the plots extremely similar. Very true. Anyway, let's take a look at some of the other things happening around the school. The Junior FFA Parliamentary Procedure Team compete at the state competition on December 2nd. 
This is only the second time in school history a team has made it to the state level. They came in the top 20 with a team consisting of eight freshmen. Congratulations to the team. Four seniors will be signing to play sports in college this afternoon, December 14th at 5.30. The seniors include Kaylin LeMaster, who will be playing football for Heidelberg University. Grayson Reynolds will be playing baseball for Capital University. Stella Weisbrod will be playing volleyball for Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. And Greg Beard will be competing in cross-country and track for Northern Kentucky University. Congratulations to the Poly Pro team, along with all of those seniors. I think that wraps up this edition of Prior Crier. But before you go, don't forget to purchase your copy of the Trojan Crier tomorrow for $1. You can read all about small businesses, girls basketball, the Parley Pro team, the college signings, as well as much more. Also, don't forget to check out the official Trojan Crier and Prior Crier Instagram accounts. They are linked below. For Prior Crier, I'm Camden Runyon. And I'm Maddie Donabauer. And we'll see you next time. time.